So today we are going to talk about seller funded buy downs. In case you're new here or new to my channel, my name is Steven Azuna. I am a mortgage advisor with Simplified Mortgage. I am licensed in Florida, Michigan, North Carolina, and in Texas. I provide home buyer insights, whether it be on properties, on the buying process, or just general tips and education. My content is also geared towards industry professionals, which could be useful with your day-to-day -day business. So let's begin. Seller-funded buy-downs are beginning to be used more frequently now that we are in a rising interest rate environment. So you might have heard a lot of chatter about them lately, and that's the reason why. Today we'll go through the two main types of buy-downs. So these two types of buy-downs are the first being a permanent buy-down. Now, permanent buy-down uses seller credit to permanently reduce the interest rate for the buyer. And I'll show you an example of that in just one second. The temporary buy-down will temporarily reduce the monthly mortgage payment for the borrower for a defined period of time. Now, depending on the size of the credit, this may uh, mean a monthly payment reduction for one, two, or maybe even three years. The seller only needs to provide the credit and the lender will handle the rest. <clears throat> it's a seller credit used differently and may give your listing an advantage over other listings in the area. You may have noticed builders have been doing this for years to entice borrowers to buy new construction versus existing homes. So the only difference is that this, the listing agent and or the seller didn't consider this as an option. Well, today we're going to get into that and why it makes sense. So first, let's take a look at the permanent buy-down. This is when the seller credit is used to permanently discount the rate below market value. The lender uses the credit and applies it to the interest rates offered that day to permanently discount the rate. It's important to note that you should not focus on the rates or the points, but just the concept of what a buy-down is and how it works. So this is just for educational purposes only and to give you an idea of what an actual buy-down is. So you can see in our example that we have a sample rate sheet. In most circumstances, borrowers don't wanna pay any points for an interest rate, so they would most likely choose a rate of 7%. However, if it, the seller offers a credit, this credit can be used to uh, buy a better rate for the life of the loan. So notice I am using a loan amount of $225,000. If the seller contributes $1,687, the buyer can receive a below market rate of 6.875%. If the seller were to contribute $3,375, the rate goes down even further to 6.75%, and so on and so forth. The, larger the contribution, the larger the rate drop. So it's important to remember that the seller credit cannot exceed the maximum allowable contribution per the loan program. Be sure to talk to your mortgage professional or someone as myself to review your options before you submit an offer. Now, as I demonstrated, permanent buy-downs are pretty straightforward to understand. Let's take a look at what a temporary buy-down is. A temporary buy-down takes the seller credit and puts it into an escrow of sorts with the servicer of the mortgage. This allows the seller to give the buyer credit and then the lender uses the credit to supplement the, uh, the reduced monthly payment for the first year or even the first few years. So let's take a look at an example. Let's assume today's rate is 7% again with no points and that the loan amount is $225,000. Now the normal principal and interest payment in this scenario would be $1,496.93. When the seller offers a credit on the temporary buy-down, the lender will use the credit to reduce the monthly payment for the first one, two, or even three years, depending on the amount of the credit. Now this allows you time to ease into a house payment and freeze up your budget to buy things for your new home. So it's a really good idea if you are struggling with the concept of a larger uh, mortgage payment versus rental payment. 
Once again, it's important to note that the seller credit cannot exceed the maximum allowable seller contribution for the loan program. So be sure to discuss that beforehand and before you consider putting in an offer. So let's take a look at the math so you can visualize what this may look like for either yourself or a client. Now, this is just an illustration. It's for educational purposes only. This is just to give you an idea of what the math would look like if you were going to use a um, option such as a, a buy down to win a deal or to sell your home. Now, this is just for simple math purposes and we'll go through it, but again, this is educational purposes only. So every scenario will be different. So to give you the idea, let's, the, let's illustrate this. We're going to look at the same loan amount of $225,000 with the seller crediting the buyer enough for a 2-1 buy down. Now this means that if the fixed rate is 7%, the seller funded buy down will reduce the first year rate to 5% for payment purposes, okay? This brings the monthly payment to $1,207.85 versus what the real principal and interest payment uh, of would be of $1,496.93. Now this reduces the borrower's monthly payment for the first year by $289.08 per month. Now that's a good amount of savings to help the buyer ease into a house payment. And it also allows them to put money in either a savings account or to buy items for their new home. Again, remember, this is still a 30 year fixed rate mortgage with normal amortization. So there's no negative amortization happening here with this loan. The only difference between this and a normal 30 year mortgage is that the buyer received a seller credit. The lender uses the seller's credit each month to make, for, make up for the difference in the payment. Now let's look at year two. The borrower's monthly payment goes up to $1,348.99, resulting in a monthly savings of $147.94 each month. And finally, in years three through 30, the borrower pays $1,496.93 in principal and interest each month which would have been their normal payment had the seller not given them a credit for a temporary buy-down. I hope this is all making sense that now that you can see how the math works. So it's not just the buyer who benefits from a seller credit. Let's take a look at how this is a win-win for both the seller and the buyer. When a seller offers a credit to the buyer, it creates an incentive to sell their home faster, especially in a buyer's market. Seller credits also help reduce the odds that a seller will need to offer a price reduction to gain interest in the market. And it also, it's also an innovative way to spread goodwill to a new homeowner who is adjusting to home ownership. Now let's look at the buyer benefits. This program allows the buyer to ease into home ownership by making a house payment below what is normal, what is normal while still paying down the mortgage. So just like another client who has the same mortgage, but without the seller credit. And remember, the payment made on the loan is this, this total payment owed. The difference is that the seller's credit is supplementing the reduction. The full payment is being made as far as the lender and the loan are concerned. This is a safe way to take advantage of lower payments in a rising interest rate environment. Let's look at the difference for the seller for a price reduction versus the seller credit and show you why this is a, a great benefit to anyone selling their home and or buying. Now, again, educational purposes only, we're using simple math here. Uh, every scenario will be different and I would be happy to go through each one of those with you individually if you have any questions. When a home is not getting interest from buyers, the seller will generally consider lowering their asking price. The national average for price reduction is $13,750 or 5% for a $275,000 initial list price. So let's use that number to go through the math. Now, of course, keep in mind every market will be different. So each scenario will again be different as well. If you would like 
personalized scenario run for you, just let me know. I'll be glad to go through those numbers with you. All right, so in the price reduction example, the original list is $275,000 and the buyer offers $261,250 for the home with no seller credit. This nets ex the excluding closing costs, $261,250 for the seller. <clears throat> Okay. Now, again, this is just for simple math purposes. We're not adding any uh, closing costs or anything in there just to keep it very uh, simple. E and again, each scenario will be different. So that's why we're keeping it as vague as possible. All right. So now let's move over to the seller fund and buy down credit. In this case, the listing price is $275,000. The buyer has a smart loan officer and has advised them about a seller funded temporary buy down. So they go into the negotiation with that mindset that they would like to ask the seller for the credit. And they need to be mindful of that when they offer a sales price. So in this case, they offer $270,000, which is $5,000 less than the asking price, and ask for a seller credit of $5,200. If the seller agrees, this results in the seller netting $264,800. Again, we're excluding any kinds of closing costs just for simple math, which is $3,550 less or more than the price reduction. So you see the a price reduction versus a buy down, it seems that it's a win-win for both the buyer and the seller. Hopefully you would agree based on the math that you see on the screen. So another advantage of this program is just about every loan program allows it. So whether your client needs a conventional, an FHA, a VA, or USDA, a seller funded buy down will likely work. So for you buyers out there, no matter what program it is that you will, that you qualify for, just know that a seller funded buy down will likely work for you. So. You may, know, you may not know this as well, that renovation options can be added to these programs for homes that need a little bit of work. So if you're interested in anything that needs renovation or if that topic is of interest, let me know. I have another class geared towards renovations and renovation loans for both agents alike and or consumers. All right. So which program is better for your seller or for the buyer? That's why you have me. I can review the numbers with you and your seller if you are an agent. I will help the buyer consider their options and then help the buyer and the seller choose the right program for them, whichever one makes the most financial sense for both parties. This is the type of teamwork that my myself and my team offer, and it also helps more of our clients make it a reality, make their home ownership a reality. So that's my, my pledge is to get more buyers, more potential buyers into homes and make home, home ownership a reality. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation about seller funded buy downs. Again, my name is Stephen Ozuna. I am a licensed mortgage advisor with Simplify Mortgage. All of my information can be found on the screen. And depending on where you are watching this, whether it be YouTube, TikTok, uh, whatever social media that you found this on, you know how to comment, you can message, you can text me, you can send me a bird pigeon, however it is that you wanna communicate, I am available just about every single day. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. Have a great day. And for all of you agents and loan officers out there, check out our agent growth classes. We have classes such as ChatGPT and AI for your real estate business, Instagram Reels, Hooks and Scripts, Embracing the Shift, all these to help you grow in 2023 and beyond. If you're not interested in any of those courses, check out this section. This is our education courses. We have things such as seller-funded buy-downs, how to use gift funds to sell more properties, credit issues, facts versus fiction, and then things like simplifying condo financing. 
If any of these ring a bell, go ahead and scan that QR code to the left side of your screen and set something up.